Thank you. Uh, it's nice to be again here at Hackloo. Last year I gave already a talk here about uh, smart locks and their insecurity, and now I have something about uh, smart ships. So, how to hack a yacht? And uh, I call it sometimes also sw uh, swimming IoT. Um, yeah, short introduction, um, how it maybe could be. Die, dickweed. <laughs> A rabbit is in the administration system. Send a flu shot. Rabbit, flu shot, someone talk to me. A rabbit uh, replicates till it overloads a file, then it spreads like cancer. Cancer? files. I need more time. But that, that should be enough for today. So, or we could also look at later. Um, it's on YouTube, I think. Um, yeah, the attack that we have seen in this uh, small video from 1996 in Hackers, um, at that time it was fiction, uh, but nowadays it is already a uh, reality. So, um, I have already seen attacks um, where someone tried to uh, modify the stackling of containers and uh, bring ships uh, or container ships out of balance uh, by changing um, or yeah, changing the load plan for a container vessel uh, and putting the heaviest containers on top and this, uh, the lightest one uh, below. So that is already a uh, real life scenario about that. So fiction in the video. Uh, and now it is reality. Okay, um, what we have in here more. So why hacking yachts? So why not hacking uh, container vessels or something like that? So my idea was about um, yachts are mostly owned by uh, rich people, by um, CEOs running their businesses from that. So all those valuable targets are swimming on the water and um, doing their business on there, or about uh, celebrities. So many of the actors or show stars, um, they have a yacht or charter one um, and floating around on the water and in oranges in Saint-Tropez. And then um, you're just sitting there at the beach with your equipment and maybe have access to the TV uh, from the celebrities on the ships. So could be also a solution for that. So how to come on uh, remotely on those boxes that I will show you um, in this talk. Yeah, a little bit about me. Um, my name you know already. Um, my Twitter handle is Obi-Wan666. Um, I'm older than the internet. Everything started with my Commodore um, in 1983. And um, yeah, I'm certified as, yeah, as you can read, so it doesn't matter. I'm an electronical specialist, so I learned it um, in the past and then uh, extended my knowledge in the military where I joined it for seven years and um, was an electronic specialist for navigation systems for helicopters. Also, I'm a volunteer firefighter since um, 31 years now. It's one of my biggest passions. In my company, I'm, yeah, let's say, a security evangelist. I'm taking care about all those stuff about security. We have a security department, but um, in some kind of cases, I'm doing a little bit more. Um, yeah, as I know, um, I work in the uh, oil and gas business at the Rosen Group and uh, also for the certification. That's the spin-off of our company. I avoid warranties because I always want to know how things are working. So buy stuff, looking if it is working, and then open it and to look how it is working. And volunteering, yeah, as I already said, uh, firefighter, but um, also I belong to a group called Giraffe. <laughs> and I have seen you also one member of the I'm the Cavalry group, and um, I'm volunteering there also, and uh, spread my information in the maritime group there. Yeah, 
what happened last year, for example. So a few newspapers about uh, yachts and hacking against that. And a short overview about uh, some accidents that happened last year. So there were a couple of uh, GPS jamming stuff uh, reported. And also the U.S. Navy had last year four incidents with their warships. So at that time, then I think, well, well, okay, they have a warship. They are very well-trained uh, navigation officers on board, but they crashed with four of their ships in other ships. So how could that happen? So quickly rumors came up about um, hmm, maybe someone has... Um, altered navigation systems or hacked into that uh, or spoofed GPS signals or so. And uh, that was then the thing where I then started, okay, um, yeah, not at that time I started. So uh, that was also some kind of thing. So hmm, maybe there is something uh, really interesting in th uh, going on that. Then I had the opportunity to work on a yacht for a couple of weeks. So I extended the system uh, that they have internet access on board while they are traveling and um, there I saw then some other things what's going on and those things that I will show you here now. Yeah, vessels, yachts and ships. So a yacht is just a meaning, uh, a, a Dutch word uh, from hunting. So the Dutch word yacht um, is more from, um, yeah, when you translate it, it's an, uh, it means hunt, hunting. And um, the Dutch marine uh, used it to uh, pursue pirates in the shallow um, waters of their countries um, because they were fast and small. And um, because they were small now, now we have uh, other definitions like, um, yeah, that the sizes matter. So we have boats, yachts, super yachts and mega yachts. And um, I put a little bit uh, things on it that you can already see that... Uh, when we're talking about that, um, sometimes on a boat we have GPS, maybe not. Um, mostly you can drive by vision. Um, the bigger the ships become, the more stuff is on board. For example, this is a super yacht from uh, a TV show in Germany on RTL2. Um, who knows the guys who is watching it? Well, doesn't matter. Um, okay, so this is their yacht. Um, called the Indigo Star and uh, it is 38.8 uh, meters long and uh, it's 7.7 .7 meters wide. So this is already the kind of stuff where most of the systems are on board. Um, what kind of systems are on board? So we have some kind of vessel traffic services. It's like um, airborne traffic services on, uh, but in this case uh, for vessels. Then we have automatic identification systems called AIS. Then we have an autopilot, sometimes. Of course, we have GPS, uh, not only once, uh, we have a couple of them. We have uh, radar, we have cameras, uh, thermal imaging, um, engine control systems, um, internet access, entertainment systems, cloud-based services for access with your uh, tablet, uh, for everything else. Okay, how those stuff is connected together? So the National Marine as, uh, Electronic Association, uh, the shortest NMEA, they have a uh, network. Oops, the wrong button. They have a uh, network design. So here is the old standard uh, called NMEA uh, 0183. So it's the serial protocol. Then here we have a converter for that, and this is already a bus system. Um, it's electrically just like the same as in CAN bus. And uh, all those devices are connecting here to the CAN bus, and here is a converter for that. And we have also here a uh, USB gateway for a laptop, and you can also have uh, um, gateways that are just natively speaking TCP IP. So we're connecting the CAN bus with an IP system, and with a serial system. And all information going together now. So we have here the, the um, uh, antennas and wireless stuff and the uh, internet access with GSM or something like that. And as you can see then, you have access from, from the top to below or the different way up also. So this is only a picture about uh, what kind of connectors um, you have. They're looking a little bit like the older days when you uh, installed net. 
So it's just like T connectors and you have to have also terminators and the front at the end of the bus. Okay. So Anamir, the old serial protocol, it was not that fast, but it was already connecting everything what's needed. So echo sounders, sonars, uh, anemometers, gyro compass, GPS, autopilots, and that's, uh, and so on. So nowadays, since 2010, uh, we have the Anamia 2000 network. So here we can already uh, have transfer rates like one megabit. So there are now uh, also 10 megabit versions out there, but then um, that's more or less a proprietary con uh, protocol then. No, not really a protocol, but uh, it's more or less a pro uh, proprietary stuff from um, Ray Marine, they call it, for example, C-Talk uh, High Speed because of 10 megabit. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so when we look then now at these, um, yeah, this is from the C-Talk NG, um, the Anamia 2000 network, they call it next generation C-Talk. So the old one was C-Talk, that was serial, uh, then they had the next generation stuff, that is the CAN bus, and then they have the Ethernet, it's all, uh, then already uh, the high speed stuff. So the interesting thing here on the chart is, this is how the marine stuff connected together. So when we look here at the yellow parts, that are already the stuff for uh, autopilot system. So all these things are for the autopilot. Um, also here um, some display units and here is a uh, remote control unit with some kind of Wi-Fi or whatever. Then uh, here we have the other things, uh, engine controls and so on. So everything connected. The vessel traffic services, um, yeah, as already said, they're using it in uh, um, for marine traffic monitoring and um, mostly used in harbors uh, to say, okay, this is your position where you can um, moor, uh, where you can get moored, and where you can maybe unload. Um, they're using radar, uh, CCTV, uh, VHF communication, and of course the AIS system. So. The next one is then the AIS system. Um, it's some kind of, yeah, how you would say, it, um, it's an uh, identification system where it's sending the, the position, um, the course that it has, and uh, the call sign number, the vessel name, uh, the owner, for example, and uh, other information. It is done by um, VHF. And also, um, there is a version online uh, that can use it uh, over satellite systems. So the AIS system is also using um, GPS information. So the GPS system is putting their position on the CAN bus. On the CAN bus, all devices are listening to that and uh, grabbing the information from that. Okay, this is the position from the GPS, um, and I use it uh, for my system. So the AIS using the GPS information and presenting it in the AIS system and sending also uh, the signal over the VHF um, as an additional position. Wow. Um, yeah. What else is done with those information? So the AIS information, for example, then, it's used in the electronic chart display in the Actis. So here we have then the position of the ship in an electronic chart uh, displayed, and also um, the position of other ships are displayed there. So, and, um, and again, the information displayed here is relying on the GPS information, just sending over to the um, CAN bus and um, displayed by all the devices who needed it. So just to keep in mind, we need it later for it. Okay, and um, the last part for the overview, then we have its uh, IT equipment. Um, yeah, it could be, oh, the picture is wrong. Normally, they should only need the picture now. Okay, so this is a rack on a 40 meter yacht, fully equipped. So we have a router. We have uh, servers, three servers in this case. 
we have two voice over IP gateways. We have a fully, uh, fully equipped 80 port, uh, a 48 port switch, a UPS device, and, um, some other systems. So 10 smart TVs, one chart PC, 14 voice over IP telephones on that chip, one internet router, yeah, the rack, UPS, and four Wi-Fi access points for coverage of Wi-Fi on the board. And some other stuff we have, um, I mentioned that already in the front, so we have smart chips nowadays. So there's some kind of, uh, li just like in a smart home, you can control the lighting. You can control the underwater lighting of the ship when you're laying in the harbor, because it looks nicer. You take your tablet, tap on the, po uh, on the button there, and then uh, the lights for the underwater lightning goes on, and uh, it looks really good. Um, you can shut down the curtains in the ship. You can uh, have um, status information about um, the rudder, about the uh, um, engine control, about, um, yeah, here you can see it a little bit, um, the RPM of the uh, engines and the oil temperature and the rudder steering um, and so on. So this is accessible via um, tablets or your mobile phone. And you have also access to your multimedia devices. So you can play music, uh, showing videos, uh, remote control, maybe your smart TV, and so on. And when we put now everything together, then we have a, light, uh, a small network. So this is a small network diagram, and um, here we have already the different attack vectors. So we can just attack it over the internet, it doesn't matter if it is uh, over uh, wireless or GSM or over satellite. Or we can try to um, attack directly the systems on board. For example, the PC um, by a uh, spoofed email uh, or, or a phishing email, for example. Um, so there are websites where you can look up the name of a ship and then you go on those website and then you can search for the crew that is working on those ships. So then you have already names um, and uh, maybe sometimes also email addresses and then um, it's easy to just directly send them crafted emails and try if something is working. Um, the same thing, we can uh, also try to attack the mobile devices or the Wi-Fi system and when we have access to those devices already, then we can search for the gateways that have access to the network internally. And the last part is then, um, the, um, you can also attack directly the network when you have maybe uh, access to that. So think about you rent one of those ships and you know next week is Bruce Willis renting those ships. Um, you have now one week time to plant your devices on those ships and he's going on those ships and then uh, you have access to all the devices uh, on board and uh, nobody will look up the ship uh, in front of it. So that could be maybe also a possible attack. Um, yeah. The attack vectors, as already mentioned, so we have GPS, we can attack AIS, the autopilot, the IT equipment, uh, the cloud-based services, and uh, cruise uh, personal electronic devices. Yeah, how those attacks working? So now we're coming to the funnier part of the systems. Um, and sh uh, I, later I show you also some uh, live demos how it works. Um, yeah, the GPS attacking. Um, GPS is the normal name for. Um, navigation systems, but um, the original term is Global Navigation Satellite System, so GNSS. But mostly GPS is easier to say. So when we're talking about GPS, we're mostly talking about NASTA GPS. So that's a US version of uh, the GPS systems. So that was the first one and uh, accessible to most of the devices. And um, the Russian Federation has its own uh, GPS system. It's called GLONASS. The European Union uh, started their own satellites too, so they're using it, uh, they called it uh, Galileo, and the Chinese version called Baidu. The things that they have all in similar is that they are working on the frequencies of the L1 band. 
the L5 band is uh, not really used, but uh, the L2 band is uh, encrypted and uh, for military use only. And um, most of the private stuff is done in the L1 band. So when you then look at the table, it's the uh, right part here. Um, this is uh, only a small set of frequencies that we use. So by knowing the frequencies, um, then you can easily um, suggest already, okay, when we know the frequencies, we can jam it. So when we say we can jam it, then we have already one of the two attack uh, scenarios for the GPS systems. Should just jam the signals, nobody will receive a position, and um, it's impossible for them um, to navigate or to look up where they are now. Um, they can know, okay, we were there, but now we are in a different place. Um, and spoofing is also a possible thing, but it's a little bit difficult. Um, you have to send uh, faked messages for uh, GPS spoofing, and um, but you need not only one uh, signal then sent, uh, you have to uh, send three different. Um, when you uh, also want to fake the time information, then you already need to send uh, four fake messages uh, at the same time. So because you have to, um, the satellite system is working, um, when you have three satellites, you can directly see uh, the position, uh, you can calculate the position about the signal by um, calculating the transmitting time. And uh, with the fourth satellite receiving, then you can have also the time information for that. So every satellite is sending um, at the first pattern um, the time when the signal was sent. And the receiver is then seeing, okay, I've um, received now the signal. Um, and it took maybe 20 milliseconds. Um, and then they can calculate, okay, I, uh, I must be anywhere on that place. And then by connecting it with three of those, uh, then they have the exact position for that. So that's a little bit terrory about, but uh, yeah, jamming and spoofing, that are possible solutions. So to make um, testing, I say testing, to test GPS, there are tools available. So when you have different antennas mounted for that, you have it um, equipped with battery power, you can also do those tests um, from a different ship up. Uh, so you can just buy those uh, devices for testing environments, uh, or when you try to fake your Pokemon Go, um, when you have some of those devices, you can play all, uh, all over the world for that. But when you have access to the network, you can also use already um, uh, software for that. So this is a piece of software that you can download uh, from the website there. And it's then, um, in this case, it is uh, a serial connection. And uh, as you know, with a serial connection to your NMEA bus, you can send out with this piece of software NMEA messages that's transmitted over the NMEA network of the ship. So with those piece of software and uh, put it on a small Raspberry Pi or whatever, plant it in a ship, you can already gamble with uh, coordinates on those. Yeah, but GPS jamming is quite common um, because it's easier to do. And um, so there were many reports about that. So mostly during uh, maneuvers of the military in any areas. So mostly they shut down or uh, make it, it um, yeah, make the position information a little bit disturbing. So also for that, um, a nice information, the last sentence here. The US Navy was not uh, teaching their captains um, the traditional navigation with sextants. So they stopped anyhow with that. And after a couple of issues they had, so they started again to train their captains uh, in the naval school um, to navigate with sextants. So normally everyone should be able, as, uh, as a captain on a ship, um, to navigate with a sextant. So, okay, but I'm doing it now. What else can we do? Um, there is a research project from the DLR. So they have, an, uh, they call it Galant, and they have a um, two by two uh, satellite, um, yeah, a two by two antenna array. And uh, with these two by two antenna array, they can uh, calculate 
is the signal sended from the real satellite position or is it from a, a from a spoofed satellite uh, position? So because it comes from a different angel, so the antenna can then calculate, okay, it's coming from uh, different ways. And then um, you see some RF spectrum about that. And this is, by the way, the antenna. And then you can uh, say, okay, this is a spoof message or not. But it's still in testing phase, um, uh, but it's working quite good. Yeah, what else we can do? So the AIS uh, information I already said. Um, this is only a couple of messages that uh, is transmitted with that. So you can look at it later. So this information you will see more on uh, web pages, for example. So there's a web page called marinetraffic.com where you can uh, just search for ships, type in the name of the ship, or you can also search for the EMO number or the MMS, uh, MMSE number of the ship or for the call sign, and then you have all the information about the ship. Um, last time the position received, um, the status of the ship, um, in this case it is moored, so it li it's laying in a harbor on anchor, um, and so on. How it is working with the AIS? So the AIS system is working over VHF radio and using only two uh, channels. So you can using um, some kind of SDR systems uh, to receive also the messages. And um, there is already a project for that on uh, rtlsdr.com. So there is an already um, ready and compartment chart um, where you can just put it on your HackRF or other devices and then you can uh, read those informations. You can also send information with that, but that's illegal for that. So just to mention. Yeah, then we have another system that is dealing with anyhow Wi-Fi. Um, in this case, it's autopilot. I'm started already with that, but not finished. The problem is um, I have to rely on someone who has a yacht. So I need always testing devices. If someone has one and uh, let me play for a week, uh, you appreciate to contact me later. Um, it's only for working. Okay, this is this uh, part I want to investigate more. Um, yeah, in this case, it was a picture, and uh, a sailor friend of me recognized this uh, device here, and then said, "Hey, that's an autopilot system." And then I was thinking, "Okay, why a forty meter yacht has an autopilot system with a remote handheld?" Okay, this is then, by the way, the remote handheld for that. And then I started to look uh, what it is doing. So you can. When you're driving on autopilot, you can take your handheld and give a new position and a new speed for that. Or you can also uh, type in new waypoints for the ship to navigate to. And it's done remotely. How it is done remotely? So I looked up the FCC ID web page, um, searched for the device, and uh, read information that you can find there. The nice thing is every time when you have an... Uh, a system that is uh, radio transmitting any kind of signals uh, and is also uh, sold in the US, it is uh, documented in the FCC ID website. So there you can find an information about, okay, it's operating on uh, 2.45 gigahertz, but it's not Wi-Fi, so it's something else. I don't know what it is. Um, I know only it's an Admega uh, 64 microprocessor they're using on an... Um, on their own Ember stack protocol. So at that point, I'm stopped now uh, because I have no further information. On. What I needed now is uh, recordings about uh, the RF signals when someone is typing a uh, new position or new speed information, So and then uh, I can work further with it. But I have different ways. So now we come into the YAT router hacking. So when I was working on those ship, uh, what I mentioned in front of it, um, I, I put in place a new internet router for that. It was specialized for maritime equipment and um, I was then looking about, okay, what is it? So this is the device. The left one, the biggest thing is um, 
the, the router and the access point itself. And the right one here is a small uh, booster. The booster antenna is then uh, mounted on the Monkey Island. So that's the, the bar where all the antennas are mounted on the ships. So they call it Monkey Island. I don't know why. Uh, there's, yeah, I know why, but there's a longer story about that. Um, okay. So the Wi-Fi booster, it has 1.6 watt uh, electrical energy. With the right antenna, you have already then um, 15 nautical miles um, covered about Wi-Fi. So it's long range. So with the antenna that I have mounted there, I had 25 watt electrical uh, ERP uh, energy on the antenna. So and also the 4G module uh, should have access up to 30 nautical miles. Uh, I was not testing it, but uh, 20 they claimed uh, that is working. How those systems are working. So there is a nice tablet software, um, or also for your PC. So it was then the nice story. Everything was finished. The system was working. I introduced the captain, uh, how the system was working, what kind of buttons he has to press, how he get access um, in the harbor for the devices, and so on. So then I started the software, and um, we were drinking a bottle of wine. It was a nice evening. And um, I showed him how the system works. And by the way, I had my Wireshark running because I used my PC for that. So... After after that, I looked up in the Wireshark protocol and uh, was thinking about, okay, what they are sending. Hmm. And then I was wondering, because the software use FTP. It connects with FTP to the router itself. Okay, FTP, username, password, blah, blah, blah. Okay, then it downloads an XML file. Uh, also not that fine. Then when you make changes in the configuration on the PC version, uh, or even also in the tablet version, um, you make changes in the XML file, and afterwards it's uploaded back to the ro uh, router. So when you are able to intercept the, um, the messages from the control panel to the router itself, then you have access to all those information what you need. Okay, then I was thinking about, okay, they're using now FTP. Yeah, FTP, it's hard-coded uh, credentials uh, in this case. And um, also some other juicy information are there. So this is then the FTP connection for that. The username loco, who is familiar with Spanish. Uh, Spanish uh, loco means some kind of mad uh, or something like that. But uh, I love the password. Secure connecting user with FTP. What? Okay. Yes. The rest of the Wireshark dump, yeah. And then I was thinking about, okay, uh, what else can I find? I had to download the software. By the way, you can download it directly from the web page without uh, anything. You don't have to register for that. Most other software also not from other vendors. Just download it and look what's in there. So in this case, it was a .NET application. I used an IELTS file to uh, analyze it and then look for juicy information in that. So here in the red parts, we have already some kind of usernames um, and uh, other informations. And then uh, also that part of the program that is responsible for the FTP connection. So here we have again the username local, the other things, also the hard code, uh, the fixed IP addresses on the network, and the last part below, um, the Wi-Fi settings. So this is the default settings. The Wi-Fi password you can change, but who will do when it is uh, not mentioned for them? Okay. So then I was looking for other things. So I started Nmap and uh, looked also, okay, the device is now online in the network. I looked up the uh, IP address of the device and then started uh, scanning from the internet um, if there is something configured like a firewall or that. So, do we need a firewall? Hmm. I think the developers don't think about that. So, yeah, you find some ports that are open. Um, the last port, the 8291 TCP, it's an interesting one because we need it later. And when you see the screenshot here, 
Um, the basic system of those um, yacht routers in this case is a um, MicroTIC router. And this is already the patched version after I um, reported everything to the vendor. So the patched version is uh, also outdated and uh, you will see it is vulnerable to another one. Um, okay. One other thing they have uh, that is remote support. So when you think about remote support, okay, you call someone, I have a problem, uh, okay, you need my IP address or you uh, download TeamViewer or something like that. Um, okay, and um, yeah, then you think, uh, okay, I give them IP address and uh, then they do something else. So in this case, they don't need anything, only a telephone number and the serial number of the device. And then, hmm, why they don't uh, need anything else? So they only needed the serial number and no IP address. How they know it? Because of the dev devices making a ping back. Every time when it's going online, it's sending the IP address to the vendor and also have them the information, okay, this device with this IP address is with the serial number, blah, blah, and then they have access to that. Um, yeah. Next thing for the remote support, uh, how they do the re uh, support for that. So the port that we have seen for that is uh, the Winbox management. So you can download the Winbox management software for MicroTIC router and then you can access uh, over that port to the boxes. The only thing that you need is username and password. Remember the username and password for the FTP server? You have access to those, uh, to those devices. Okay. With the Winbox management software, you have then more options to configure the device. You can also configure a firewall and um, also some different users. So here you see um, there is a user loco, and that's a user used for the FTP server. And there's a user Jere. Jere is one of the developer and he is always uh, has access to your box. So. <laughs> I'm not sure if it is uh, a good idea uh, that someone else have access to your box all the time. Uh, okay. When you're not so good in um, analyzing software and figure out uh, how to find hardcoded credentials, you can also use some kind of uh, those tools, MKBrutos for brute forcing uh, MicroTIC routers, or every version below the 6.42, you can use this exploit just um, the exploit and the IP address and it gives you back the username and the password for that. Just as a small hint. Okay, then I contacted the vendor, they um, responded to it very quick, uh, yeah, very quickly on the next day already and then uh, they patched two of my four things that I mentioned to them and uh, yeah, it's reported on a CVE uh, and then it. Afterwards I looked up what they patched. Mm. Oh, it's missing here. Uh, okay, I looked up what I patched, and um, in this case, they um, obfuscated only a few things. Uh, they obfuscated the part with the passwords and um, removed the FTP part and switched over to SSH. Okay, now how you can find those boxes? Just use some kind of these OSINT uh, technologies or go uh, to those uh, marinetraffic.com website and then you can look up um, some kind of other information. Then you find uh, all those stuff or you can use Shodan. So in Shodan you're just looking for those devices, maybe for MicroTIC routers and then uh, you have to search for a, a valid yacht router for that. But, yeah, that I already mentioned. Um, in the patch software, the obfuscating part were only done by the uh, Windows version. So remember there was an iOS version and there was an Android version. So I take the Android version, um, put it in IL Spy and voila, we have it again. <laughs> so when you obfuscate, then do it right. Um, by the way, there was another nice uh, thing. Uh, a small class that called Patch Backbone Data Leak. Uh, I don't know where this kind of software is for. Um, yeah. Yeah. Summary of the patch. 
it's done. So now we come to the last part because of the SATCOM devices. So Wi-Fi coverage or GSM is not uh, wide enough. So when you're wider on the sea, then you need uh, some uh, anyhow um, connection to over SATCOM. So there you have mostly all over the world. So the problem is uh, patching. How you patch a SATCOM device when you are traveling, um, and many old versions are online. And I show you a sample about that. So this is already done, uh, work done by others. Uh, they have put some search terms for that. When you look up those uh, terms in Shodan, you will find all of the other things. Um, then look for the uh, exploits for that, and then you find some information. So what I found was, um, you can also use uh, the ship tracker.shodan.io, but they're using only uh, the VSAT um, SATCOM boxes. And uh, I, I don't like the web page, it's a little bit buggy. So what I found then was a different thing. Uh, so I was looking for for some kind of uh, antenna system, some kind of uh, Yoto routers uh, from different ways. And um, yeah, then I find a thing that called um, digital antenna solutions. Uh, okay, digital antenna solutions, that sounds good. Um, let's dig deeper in that. So then... Um, to make it easier, um, my search term in Shodan is then here a server, uh, micro digital web server. And then when you take that, that we can take you now in a demo. Uh, I have already Shodan here open. I take my, uh, you don't see something, that's bad. Come on, I change it. I think now you see something. Um, okay, I use here the search term, um, and then you find okay, twenty. Uh, 20 boxes are online now. Um, you have to take then these with the bubbles here. And, um, okay, just take one in the United, um, United Kingdom. You just click on the web page. Maybe this one was not a good one. Because it was already SSL. Uh, let's take this one. Yeah, over satellite is a little bit slow. Not reachable. Dun, 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 dun. Ah, here is a web page coming. And uh, by the way, it's a little bit old version. It's the version 164. And okay, now we have a lock on screen. How to bypass now the, uh, those lock-on screens? So you can read the user manual. There are um, username and password in the documentation of the uh, of this system. But there is another way that you can uh, use. Just look for the source code of the web page. <laughs> Where's my plus? So um, <laughs> This one is nice. JavaScript user lock in Java. So when we click on that, we have already here now, you can scroll a little bit down. And the funny part is coming now. Um, okay, I have some URLs. Now I take this URL. Um, and try a little bit. Dun, 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 dun. All right, slow and voila. <laughs> That's it. So I'm logged in now as the dealer, as the manufacturer of the device uh, on the ship, my Hannah, and uh, my position is currently. 
anywhere here and I don't know where it is. Um, by the way, it's now logging out because of the security of the system. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, when you when you set a referral parameter correctly, then um, you can stay on the web pages. And um, yeah, okay. Switch back to my presentation to show you the last two minutes. Um, Shift F5. Okay, so that was the demo. And yeah, that was the part um, with the menu and the uh, pictures about that and the things of the documentation. So CTL, uh, CTL 3, 2, or 1 defines you the level of access. 3 is the highest level and so on. After I found it, I looked up, okay, maybe someone has uh, found it already or not. Um, luckily, um, uh, unluckily, I found out that someone else has found it already also and reported it. He was a little bit faster than I. But uh, the CVE report is only for one version. Um, I figured out uh, all those kind of versions are vulnerable to the same version. Um, I also, I have also one, uh, the 186 version. It's from um, my this year. So that was the latest version. And um, yeah. The vendor has fixed it now with a version 200 and there are uh, 20 boxes online um, also that are not fixed yet. So what else you can do with those devices? Um, I showed now here all the menus that are available for that, or a couple of them only. So the funny part is um, you can use um, the file admin menu or the, um, the firmware upload path, so you can upload just a new firmware for that. Or um, uh, when you make an, an DOS attack against those antenna systems, just change the antenna configuration for that. Put it on a uh, new antenna and then they have no internet connections on the high C anymore. So that's some kind of um, denial of service you can do with that. Or just reboot it all the time. Make a script and just let it reboot. Uh, I'm not sure if it is funny, uh, but yeah, it is possible. Mm. Yeah, what is the risk for those devices? Uh, you can increase the costs or uh, make denial of service for that. So what I could not show today is um, I have a different, an additional one. Um, I have it mentioned here. So I have another satellite system where I have uh, found out that you um, that you can uh, get access to the configuration file of the thing. So you just send some crafted packets to those uh, box. And it's generating an uh, ini file with all the configuration patterns and also the username and password for the system. And it's uh, putting then um, the information in a temporary file on the website where you can uh, later go there and download it without authentication. So, but the details, um, yeah, when it is fixed, then I can publish uh, the complete details about that. And yeah. What's next? The last thing. Um, they're going more and more in cloud services. So cloud services, yeah, it's nice, nice to use. Uh, the part that we had here, now they're going in the uh, cloud and then you have access to your ship from all over the world. You can look up um, how your ship is running, maybe when you are um, a charterer uh, and so on. Yeah. And uh, coming to the last parts now, the Anomea gateways, some research has to be done on that. Um, problem with uh, patching of the SATCOM boxes is, uh, yeah, when there is time for. The VTS system, it's, yeah, I only know about one thing that um, is really done now, but um, most of them is uh, unexplored also. The autopilot stuff, for example, is also missing. And uh, in injecting NMEA messages, I'm currently also working on. So I have a small GPS receiver a system on a chip. It's sending plain text NMEA messages uh, to the serial bus, and uh, I'm gambling in my lab setup with that now. Um, yeah. Special thanks to you for attending my talk, for Hacklu to having me here again.
Um, yeah, I'm the cavalry also because um, it's a great platform to share uh, thoughts and uh, um, share information with others around the world. Uh, Brian Satira and Brian Olsen, they gave at the uh, um, DerbyCon a really good talk about, um, yeah, they called it hacking a primer on today's pirate. So it's Similar thing, uh, not uh, not only yachts. So they are focusing more uh, on commercial ships and the propulsion systems and the vulnerabilities in the propulsion systems and the ICS system that they found there. So it's really, really, really interesting stuff. When you put now together my things and their things, then you have already some kind of remote control of that. Yeah, and my employer for uh, that I can also be here and all my friends around the world. Yeah, may the force be with you. Thank you. Any questions here in the room? No, you just. Um, thank you for your presentation. Great, great stuff. Um, I must be honest, I couldn't withstand temptation to rename all these vessels to Titanic. <laughs> so you didn't so far? I, I don't. Okay, respect. Um, ethical hacking. <laughs> okay, any more? Mülle nicht in den Daten anderer, ne? Any more uh, questions or... Here's another one. By the way, by renaming it on the web page, it's only uh, in the display, so it doesn't matter. Um, did yeah. <laughs> did you already uh, try to hack uh, Canvas of the car? Because they are... No, on the car can not. <laughs> so I know about that, yes, but uh, I'm not gambled with that. Um, no, not really. I, I'm, I'm using small devices to reset uh, 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 the mill lamp in my car because the malware indicator lamp is always flashing up and then I have to reset it. And <laughs> that I'm doing, yes. Any more? Someone else? Otherwise you can catch me up later here anywhere. Anybody so with a yacht in the room that's worried? <laughs> Okay, thanks very much. Okay, thank you.